Hey guys, it's the basic Sorgonomics for this June 10th, 2015. I'm Mike Sorg and Sorgatron on the Twitter. Sorgatron.com is where this lives. If you found it somewhere else, please subscribe on the audio podcasty things or look for up basic Sorgonomics over on the YouTube.coms. So, uh, rare opportunity today. We got somebody in the studio that's been hanging out with us. Uh, we're post wrestling mayhem show here, very very late on the Tuesday nights. <laughs> it is technically Wednesday morning, so this works, right? Uh, but on the couch, he's our friend in the mainstream media, as we like to call him on Wrestling Mayhem Show. He is Matt Carlin's. How you doing, sir? I'm awesome. It's super late, or is it super early right now? <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> well, and, and you are we allowed to say your employer is, is this? You are a news person. That, that's correct. I am a television news producer. And I work for KDKA TV. Oh. I'm employed by the giant eye that sees all. So this was a this was kind of a connection because I got to see the place where you work. I got to see all yep. the tech and the doodads over there at KDKA. Uh, thank you for giving me the grand tour over no there. <laughs> and I don't give it to everybody. You're special. I'm special. That's <laughs> awesome. Uh, but uh, now you've seen how we do things here. <laughs> I'm happy to report. It's just as hot under your lights as it is underneath the lights in our studio. <laughs> <laughs> so they don't have a, some semblance of central no, hair no. to attempt to to weigh that over. No, if you think those anchors are comfortable when they're sitting out on that set, they are not. They are roasting out there. <laughs> yeah, I've, been, I've actually been. I, I was on uh, Night Talk over at PXI one time, and and I and I think I I might have wore a suit or something. I can't remember, uh, but uh, but I remember it being fairly fairly warm. So super warm <laughs> it's unbearably warm out there under the lights so so you're somebody that uh you came across the wrestling mayhem show so i, I guess you know kind of wanted to angle this you know you're somebody in the mainstream media been at for uh, a few years now i know you said you've you worked down in savannah georgia for some stations uh what is drawing you towards the podcasting thing and you know what the mayhem show of course you've been helping out a bit there as well especially content wise of great stuff including the 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 uh the, the mayhem mania <laughs> experiment oh. thought experiment from a few months ago that was awesome that was great we're bringing that one back. i got an idea we're gonna bring that back something to look forward to you book SummerSlam, maybe maybe there you go <laughs> but, but what what kind of attracts you to this uh this medium when you're, you're 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 playing with all the bells and whistles there down at kdka downtown and then there's you seem very excited one about my couch over there and <laughs> and, and, and about what we're doing over here um why am why am i in the podcast is um i don't know it's probably just a personality trait of mine i am um i I don't like to read like if i'm gonna read a book i don't like to read a fiction right i like to read non-fiction i like to feed my brain i Mm -hmm. like to inform myself um and there's only so much music you can listen to yeah so as someone who commutes you know i'm sitting on the bus i need something to listen to and that's kind of where it came from it came from I need something to listen to other than talk radio. I need something other, something other to listen to than music. So let's find some of these podcasts and let's just search around and let's see what, what I can find. And you'd be surprised how quickly I stumbled upon your podcast store. Just oh, really? simply searching for wrestling on Stitcher, just knowing that, I mean, I, I can't remember what the first wrestling podcast I listened to was, but you, yours was definitely one of the very first that I listened to. And I didn't even know you guys were based in Pittsburgh when I first started listening to you so, guys. So, wait, not only... I literally was listening to the Wrestling Mayhem Shoot Cold, and in my mind, the first time I was listening to you guys, you guys could have been in the middle of nowhere. You could have been in Colorado, California. I had no idea. I just... I, I sampled it. I stumbled upon you on Stitcher. I sampled it. I liked what I heard. I listened to the next week's episode. I think after, like, a week or two of the episodes, you finally let slip that you guys were in Pittsburgh, and I was like, oh, well, that's very interesting. <laughs> I try to say it at the beginning. I, I try to represent, but I, I you're, guess I you're forget. very dutiful about it now. But but at the time, I was a little back then. You were not mentioning it. How long ago was this? Oh, well, let me let me check my my phone. Will tell me <laughs> <laughs> the Stitcher app will tell you That's right, how does. long you've been wasting your life on Stitcher. Yeah, so which is oh, convenient. It's so scary. So it goes, scary. Sometimes it makes me want to quit. But <laughs> let's see if uh, this thing will tell me. Oh no, that's no good. Since uh, it says I have been listening to Stitcher. Since August of 2011. So I, I started on July, which means we were just on there like about a month before you discovered us, probably. 
Um, because yeah, I look, we are like, you know, probably a couple of page scrolls down under like art of wrestling and everybody else that's more popular than us. But, uh, but still, we're, we're definitely still there on Stitcher. Um, which is interesting because also it, it, we also have some very interweaving friends. Isn't that weird? That's really freaking weird. It's really weird. <laughs> um, yes, that, that was another thing that kind of weirded me out too, especially, Knowing our friend Jack Bunja, mm-hmm. who's someone I've known since college, and somehow he got hooked up with you guys. I think mostly through Don. Yes. Uh, and independently of me. Yeah. And then I, independently of him, found you guys too. And then we learned that we both knew each other. And, and there are we, other mutual friends floating around of course, through of my course. works and things like that. It's strange. Um, but it's cool because then you hear like, because you're like, well, these guys are interesting. I listen to them on my podcast. And you're like, oh, Jack knows them. Oh, well, they must be cool. Or, oh, Jim Loke knows this guy. He must be all right. You know, <laughs> turns into one of those. It takes everything to another level. It is. It is. Uh, you know, I, I've talked on here and other things uh, uh, about how this like kind of connects and shrinks your world a bit. You know, I don't know if it's because of the kind of work we're doing or because of the interconnectedness we're having online. Uh, but, you know, I... I, I I love that we you you just you know you sit with it, here with us uh, every couple of weeks at, at the very least you know talking with somebody from Texas from from Poughkeepsie New York you know uh, emails from our buddy from California you know uh, I mean that's but still that this just happened like right in Pittsburgh it is still I think very impressive and you you talk about it shrinking shrinking your world but but for me this is expanding my world. Like I would never right, right. meet any of these people, you know, I would never discover all these different interesting um, things there are to see and do. Um, it, it, it's, it's pretty incredible. And, and then to, to see it go to another level where, where I'm not just a consumer, but we get to know each other, you know, through Twitter, through Facebook. And next thing you know, we're hanging out together. We're, we're visiting each other's houses and this thing is like so far beyond what was even possible. And it all started just because, you know, we stumble upon one another on online somewhere. Awesome. People talk about, you know, the internet, like it's a bad thing. Like it's like, it makes us antisocial. Um, but that's not it at all. It's, mm-hmm. it's a, it's an entirely new way to connect that was, would not be there otherwise. You know, and, and that's something that we're, we're doing a kind of a social media mental health series over uh, my friends at Seclair. And I'm really worried, and, and, and they let me in on one of them, and I was trying to, I feel like I always have to defend this kind of medium uh, and social media and that, that attachment, because I feel like it's, one, if you already have problems, it's going to accentuate those problems. Easier access to cam, like porn, uh, you know, uh, things that will make you depressed because everybody seems like they're having a better time than you on Facebook, for instance, right? If you have mm-hmm. a, a depression problem, right? And, and and I think a lot of us maybe do have that to a certain point. But if you're somebody who's social, but, you know, uh, I'm thinking if I was back home in, 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 in Mercer County or our friend Bobby, that there's not much in Johnstown, PA, right? Uh, <laughs> there's, so there's not a lot of like, you know, like-minded people that you can associate and have fun with. And this kind of breaks that down. And even though he is two hours away, he's part of the circle, right? Definitely. So, um, awesome, awesome. So, um, you know, kind of parting things. You know what? Uh, geez, I, I don't know how to close this up here. This is kind of an impromptu thing. I'm like, he's in the studio. We got to talk to him. You know. Uh, I feel but, like you wanted to get like my thoughts, like the mainstream perspective on podcasting. That's a good point. Uh, you know, I, I kind of had, you know. This has been a discussion for a bit, and the, I've seen a few panels, uh, some at PodCamp, some otherwise. Point Park just did one recently. I had a lot of journalists on there, and kind of their perception about the changing with media. But, yeah, again, okay, looking at podcasting in particular, uh, how is it looked at on you know, on your side of the fence? Um, I mean, not much. I mean... It's not really seen as competition. No, so much. no, not at all. Um, you have your audience. They're they're tuning in. They have TV. They have over the air. Even I can get your channel. And I don't even have cable. You're opening a can of worms. <laughs> 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 just talking about just the philosophy of of news as 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 a sh- as as television news as a show, whereas I try to look at it as a product 
You know, we we, mm-hmm. we are creating the product of news to be distributed, and it just happens to be that television is the means that provides the greatest audience right now. But in five years, what will be where will be the best place to sell that product, mm-hmm. which is the news? Will it be through a podcast? Now, I will say that um, my company CBS is part of the uh, the Play Dot It. Um, podcast operation that is something that's it's it's underneath um the cbs umbrella um and that's the podcast network that uh taz is on doing his uh okay human podcast machine and i think um i want to say we got rick flair um yep but yeah the play dot it is um is, is under the cbs umbrella so that's at least a step in the right direction and at least tells you that a big company like CBS thinks that there's some They're profit to be made. Yeah. Um, so that's a good thing. And this this looks like uh, this looks like something in the vein of what we we know from Podcast One, right? Like where it's a big conglomerate taking taking this on. I don't know if Podcast One is some kind of conglomerate, but it, they're taking uh, definitely personalities that are already have a fan base, say, and you know we you know be it from radio be it from you know wrestling for instance and i presume they're they're taking that entire network and say here advertise right yeah and they're um yeah i mean it, it's all about trying to monetize it right mm-hmm. um so no one will put put all their eggs into you know in, into facebook or twitter unless those networks can prove that that's something that can be monetized no, this um, is interesting. That, that there's a podcast with us button. Submit your podcast. So this is interesting. <laughs> is this on? Is this on uh, play. This is it? on play. It. I'm looking at. Um, also, this now is, I've got you. See. Also, uh, this is a WordPress site. So. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, you know what? Uh, WordPress is um, pretty commonly used in the uh, CBS uh, family. Um, a lot of the, a lot of the website work is going on using WordPress. Now, as someone who doesn't work in the um, in the in the website pr- producing uh, side of things, I don't know is is WordPress bad? Uh, no, 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 no. It's it just it's it's free, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well. <laughs> and uh, I I just thought that was interesting to see my 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 login pop up at the top. And uh, but no, I think that's good. You know, especially in some of these cases, I think uh, spending the money on a developer when uh, something like a WordPress can work just fine. You know, and you will spend money on a developer. But um, but it, it it shows that whoever is doing this, you know, is paying attention. That these are the tools people are using and are familiar with. In my mind, at least, I I, I don't know what's happening on the corporate side of things. But or maybe this is just where the sign up process is is on a WordPress site that's like <laughs> within the site or something like that. I'm knowing some I'm noticing some funky stuff happening to the address bar at the top, for instance. So maybe this is just kind of a redirect. But still, very interesting that they're taking this on. Definitely. Yeah, it it is a little bit interesting. And like I said, I mean, TV news is in such a weird place right now. Um, like I was saying earlier, it's it's it still sees itself as a show and not as a product. Mm-hmm. And I think if it could shift that view a little bit, um, that would kind of help the industry um, change the way it's it's distributing the product. And again, that all gets back to you know, can you profit from it? And can you convince? you know, a big company like CBS to take a chance on seeing things a little differently. And, uh, look, I'm just, um, <laughs> I'm just one spoke in the wheel. So, uh, maybe there's some, uh, larger gears that are already turning on that, but, uh, it's hard to say. Definitely. Uh, something to look towards to. So, um, so I talked with you before. Did you do, did you do a podcast for a little bit? Or was that, I'm just thinking of blog. Yeah, we're, I, we're talking about it. I, I did. Bit. I did a podcast. Um, I didn't, it, it was more, to I, I wanted to gain a better understanding of podcasting, and the only way for me to really get that was to pick it up and do it myself. And so I gathered up a couple friends of mine, and we started doing an NHL podcast. I think we did about um, I think we did about like a season and a half um, until life kind of got in the way, mm-hmm. and I had to kind of like tear down my my crude podcasting setup and uh, and kind of uproot. And uh, that kind of ruined things for a little bit, and we couldn't kind of get the ball rolling again. But maybe if um, things settle down again, I can uh, try take it on again. I was actually walking around with my sisters at the arts festival tonight, 
And they just like out of nowhere, just like turned to me and they're like, you know what? We're funny. We're having fun talking. We should just do a podcast. <laughs> Which is funny. Like, and, and I'm like, you naive little children, if you only knew the the, the, <laughs> the, the, the burden you place on yourself. I, and I see you doing this every week, um, just relentlessly. Um, you're a machine, Sorg. Jeez. I and, don't know. Uh, I just canceled like four podcasts, so I don't know. Good. About that. <laughs> good. Thin the herd. If, if, if you're not ready to keep doing it, get out of the way. That, that was my opinion on it. I was like, you know what? If I can't do this uh, NHL podcast every week, then you know what? Let's, let's put it in the fridge for a little bit. And mm-hmm. If it's time mm-hmm. to pull, pull it out again, let's and do it. Was, let's just not do it halfway. And that was do the it, case because I was putting a lot of time. I was doing – I expanded on this daily concept to the other properties. And I liked some of it, but I didn't like most of it. And it was just kind of like I can't figure out – Maybe I mean, maybe it's something that was not just me coming up with the, the topics and everything. Um, and it was just kind of like we're doing this in a smaller version, you know. Um, like I feel like this is like we're doing – this talk and everything it feels like we're doing a mini awesome cast you know and this is familiar to me so i don't know i i am still kind of figure out where that is and what do people respond to i've often been surprised by what this does and i was hoping that would bring something to those other properties perhaps but um but well, this is all part of the creative process right? it is. you're, it you're is. experimenting and you do it for x amount of time and then you're like okay this works this doesn't work let's try this let's i don't distribute it this way right. you know Right. I don't need another show that's gone on for 250 episodes. Right. I don't need that to happen. I need the one that people respond to. And maybe that's something. And and that's the interesting thing is there's not necessarily has to be something we do. You know, I've been some podcasts that I started. It was funny. I canceled like four of them. We started two new ones. Um, (laughs) I think the most important thing is that like not 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 um, not letting the. the obligation or the inertia of, of what you're doing kind of like um, dictate what you're going to do going forward. If, right, you, if right. you're like, you know what, this isn't, this is, this is fun, but this isn't working. This isn't profitable. This isn't growing. L- let's take it down. Let's try something new. Let's profitable. start building from the ground up again. You know, start, you start talking about profitable and, 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 I, and we made the mistake of saying making a living at pro wrestling with one of our indie guys tonight. And it's like, well, I don't know about profitable. Maybe we we'll be lucky if we're breaking even. And that's kind of what podcasting is a little bit. And I think that's what I like about it. There's a lot of uh, uh, similarities there between that and like an independent wrestler or an independent musician or something like that. We're kind of like an, the indie radio, you know. I mean, this really is just an extension of all the uh, uh, pirate radio stations back in the day. We're just getting guys like CBS playing ball now, right, for instance. I mean, and, and, but there's a lot of interesting partnerships. I'm, I'm actually talking with some people that will hopefully help get that word out there, you know. It'd be nice to be on a CBS, you know, or something like that. Cause, because it feels like there should be, like, that would get me, I just need more opportunities for people to hear what I have. And, I, and I'm hoping that we have a quality that people will be into. And it only gets more crowded every day, you know. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. everybody wants to give it a shot. I mean, look at me. I look at doofus like me. It was like, yeah, sure, let's let's give it a whirl. Let's see if we can right. do it. And you get like all the wrestlers and the Kevin Smiths and everything. And some people are not doing it the right way. I think Kevin Smith really has found his spot with it for for sure. I think he does a great thing with that. But and he found like a new creative life in general, you know. Uh, but certainly, like all the wrestlers getting on the podcasting bandwagon has been very interesting. A little discouraging, especially the guys like Cole Cabana that really started the whole trend. I think. Um, or the... I'm glad it slowed down a little bit. Right. It was going right a little bit crazy for a while, and I hate to see. Not necessarily because I don't want all these guys to have their own podcast. That's fine. I mean, if the audience is there, but I, 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 I see a lot of guys that are in danger of getting lost in the shuffle, and I, you know, I'm not concerned about these guys are big names. Um, what I worry about is the, you know podcast that selfishly like you know like yours um especially the indie indie mayhem show podcast that really has something to say mm-hmm. and is and is taking a, a fresh slant on professional wrestling that you just do not hear that kind of podcast with that kind of a focus um on the individuals um out there very often and I have no idea if that is like really kind of gaining fire or anything like that but I know that does amongst that very inside group i I hear great things from the wrestlers i don't know about fans but the wrestlers are are are, are seem to be liking it and uh and and that that one it feels good you know 
to have something like that that people are responding to, even if it's only a couple people, you know, uh, getting that text from uh, uh, that that message from uh, uh, one guy that I work with at the wrestling shows when this show doesn't go up is kind of interesting, right? <laughs> uh, Where's the mayhem show? Right, yeah. right, exactly. Like that. That's and then you do feel an obligation. You're like people are listening, so yeah. I got to put something up there for them. <laughs> so even if it is thirty people, it's thirty people. You know, uh, there was a really good. Uh, where was the talk from? Uh, Podcasters Group Therapy. They're like, you know, okay, you went and started started your own. No, no, actually, it was, it was Dan Benjamin of 5 by 5 You went and started a show that's just you and not interviews with everybody else like he did recently, and much like I did here. Um, if people are following you and just listening to you, you know it's not you using everybody as a crutch. They're there for you. And right. And that's, that's a pretty cool, cool feeling there. So Definitely. Yes. So I don't know. Maybe I'll get a jobby job in, 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 in radio. It seems like seems like there's a lot more options now that they're now that Apple's starting radio stations, right? There are a lot of <laughs> there are a lot of applications for podcasting that are there for TV mm-hmm. news. TV news sounds stupid. For local news, there are a lot of applications that podcasts can provide for local news. There is to exploit, but right, right. B- but the time has to be taken to explore it. I mean, we're heading in this direction where. That this on-demand thing is 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 on our phones at this point. I mean, mm-hmm. it's in our cars. There's that. no excuse. That that is that is something to be seized. That is an audience to be fought over. Mm-hmm. No matter what you are, so. you you can't put a fence around yourself and be like, "We're TV. We can't. We're not going to try to compete in that." That is that is an audience that is worth fighting for. There you go. I think that's a perfect way to end it. Mainstream Matt on the wrestling side. Mainstream Mainstream Matt, if you love wrestling. uh, I'm sorry. Mainstream Matt on Twitter, if you love wrestling. At Matt Carlin's on Twitter, if you hate wrestling. There you go. And uh, Mainstream Matt, uh, that's 1t.blogspot.com for his ratings on pro wrestling stuff there. He also joins the guys on the Midweek War on the WrestlingMamShow.com talking about all the shows that come on Wednesday, for instance. All five hours. Oh, man. Oh. I, I, I wonder how long. Speaking of of, of persistence, I, I wonder how long you guys are. You're already running into scheduling problems between you guys. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're in trouble this week. But as I told you, Sorg, as I told you, Sorg, that, that season finale of Lucha Underground is only nine weeks away. We could do anything for ten weeks, Sorg. We could do anything for ten weeks. I could do anything. For my 10 old weeks. man, your my, my old man, the tax preparer. I ask him, "How are you going to survive this tax season, Dad? Tax season so long. I could do anything for three months. I could do anything for three months. So just wow. keep telling yourself that. Those are that's a good credo from the old man for you to live yeah. by. You could do anything for three months." oh check them out <laughs> check out everything else sorgatron.com sign up for the newsletter and so much more subscribe to us on audio video formats wherever you find your fine fine podcasts and we'll see you guys next time this show is a member of the sorgatron media podcast network find out more at sorgatronmedia.com